When Don Wells died in November 2020, the world was shocked to learn just how badly she had been living. As a star of one of the most iconic TV shows in American history, the 82-year-old could not even manage to pay her medical bills. How did the actress, infamous for her beauty, talent, and fashion sense, fall so far from grace? How did the industry allow one of its legends to dwindle and fade? In this video, we delve deep into the life of Dawn Wells while showing you some of her rare photos. On October 18, 1938, in Reno, Nevada, Dawn Wells was born to Joe Wesley Wells and Evelyn Steinbrenner. As the sole breadwinner of the family, Joe Wesley Wells owned Wells Cargo, a local construction company, and was the sole breadwinner of the family. Thus, Dawn's childhood was pretty comfortable, and she never lacked anything while growing up. After graduating high school, she moved all the way to Columbia, Missouri, to attend Stevens College. Surprisingly, she majored in chemistry. Unhappy with her life at Stevens College, Dawn transferred to the University of Washington in Seattle. In this brand new chapter of her life, she decided to pursue her dreams by majoring in theater arts and design. Happier in Seattle than she had been in Columbia, Dawn had a much more balanced college life. She became a member of the Alpha Chi Omega sorority and started to get interested in beauty pageants. In 1959, when Dawn was 21 years old, she returned home to participate in the Miss Nevada State Beauty Pageant. As a true American sweetheart, she beat many other beautiful contestants for the winning crown. Dawn's title as Miss Nevada meant she had the unique honor to represent her state at the national level. Although she didn't win the Miss America contest in Atlantic City, New Jersey, she still learned a lot from the experience and got a lot of exposure. The fact that she brought gifts for all 54 competitors had a lot to do with it. Dawn graduated from college the same year as she participated in the Miss America pageant. Almost immediately, Hollywood opened up its arms to her. She started off small, as could be expected from a pretty face without any powerful representation. Her screen debut was on the TV drama The Roaring Twenties. She also appeared in the movie The New Interns. Although movies carried more prestige at the time, TV was on the rise. This was where Dawn Wells found her home. For the first couple of years of her career, all she managed were guest roles. She appeared on a large number of TV shows, such as Wagon Train, Tales of Wells Fargo, Surfside Six, The Detectives, Lawman, Channing, and many others. In all these guest appearances, Dawn played similar roles, that of the ingenue, the damsel in distress, or the girl next door. This solidified her image in the American public as a typical American sweetheart, an image that would play a huge role in her next phase of life. In 1963, American television producer Sherwood Schwartz was creating a new adventure comedy series for the CBS network titled Gilligan's Island. The show, about a handful of charter boat passengers who get shipwrecked on an island, was to feature an ensemble cast. If a show of such ambition and cost were to be successful, then the producers would have to get the casting absolutely right. As such, the search was underway. One of the roles they would have to fill was that of Mary Ann Summers, a small brunette girl next door who would be the main rival of the bubbly blonde actress Ginger Grant. For the role, Sherwood and his partners auditioned over 350 actresses. One of the main personalities vying for the role was blonde bombshell Raquel Welch. Although many people expected Raquel to easily win the role, Dawn emerged as the shock victor. Years later, in an interview with the Associated Press, Dawn made a joke saying, that's the only time I could beat Raquel Welch out of anything. Well, as could be expected from such an original and well-written show, Gilligan's Island was a huge hit. The original run went on for 98 episodes, and ratings remained decently high throughout. Virtually every member of the ensemble cast became an American cultural icon. As a beloved character, Dawn's Marianne Summers was not left behind. In the role, Dawn was able to lean into the image that the American public had of her as the archetypical girl next door. Remember, all her years spent guest starring in various TV shows helped her build up this image. As Dawn had a somewhat similar background to Mary Ann as a small town farm girl, she did not have to make too many changes to play the role perfectly. As Mary Ann, Dawn also had a distinct look that became an iconic American fashion statement. Her signature denim shorts became synonymous with the wholesome girl next door archetype. This was a significant achievement as most assumed the role of Marianne Summers would pale in comparison to that of Jinger Grant. After all, Jinger Grant had been created with Marilyn Monroe as the inspiration 
and was meant to be played by Jane Mansfield before her tragic death. In 2005, Dawn auctioned off the original outfit that she wore for the show. The gingham blouse and shorts ensemble sold for $20,700. As a matter of fact, Marianne or Ginger Grant became somewhat of an endless American debate. Both characters represented the personality types of women that could be found in modern American life. Marianne was a lot more down to earth, by the book, and reserved. However, Ginger Grant was much more sexy, worldly, and divache. While producers encouraged this debate to promote the show, there was some concern that all the attention could weigh negatively on the respective actresses. Even so, they both maintained for years that they were proud of their characters. After the show ended, Don Wells did not abandon the role of Marianne Summers. So many fans around the country who were obsessed with the character would always badger her about it. Not once was Dawn frustrated by all these questions. Being a good sport, she indulged all the fans as much as possible. She always said she was proud of the role, and her behavior indeed confirmed that this was the case. Unfortunately, Dawn was having a lot of trouble finding another huge screen role. But rather than sit around and wait to be offered something, she decided to try her hands at the theater. This was quite a successful endeavor, as she appeared in over 100 productions. Some of her most memorable appearances came in the play's chapter 2, and they're playing our song. Her work as an actress aside, Dawn also did a lot of things. For one, taking a page from her father's book, she started her own business. Wishing Wells Collections was a clothing company that provided for people with limited mobility. The goal was not necessarily to create profit, but to support those who had trouble supporting themselves. This aside, she also founded and organized Spud Fest, an annual family film festival hosted in Driggs, Idaho. The festival allowed Dawn to keep in touch with fans of her past work. It also allowed her to highlight and celebrate her peers from the golden age of TV, such as Barbara Eden and Lou Ferrigno. The industry was quick to forget these icons, but Dawn was not. To top it all off, Dawn published two books. The first was a cookbook titled Marianne's Gilligan's Island Cookbook, featuring recipes inspired by the show and the character. The second, titled What Would Marianne Do? A memoir in which she discussed the lessons learned from her long and storied career. For how much Dawn Wells offered to the industry both on and off screen, the industry wasn't as magnanimous. Having no children from her one marriage, her old age proved to be quite a tough time. With an inconsistent cash flow, she found it hard to keep up with the constant hospital bills that plagued her. In 2018, she had to set up a GoFundMe page just to deal with the medical bills she faced after a bad fall. When the pandemic struck, Dawn was weak and vulnerable. She contracted the disease and it proceeded to wreck her body. Even so, even in this weakened and impoverished state, she continued to share her talent with the world. With the new year approaching, Dawn recorded a Happy New Year's message to be released on the holiday. Unfortunately, she would not live to see that date. On December 30th, 2020, Dawn died in Los Angeles of COVID-related illnesses and complications. She was 82 years old. People may have failed to give Dawn her flowers during her old age, but it is not too late to preserve her legacy. She may no longer be alive to witness, but it would be a great honor to her life and her work if fans continue to spread the word about all the good she did in her time. This has been the story of Dawn Wells, an icon of TV who remained America's sweetheart her whole life. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.